What's up guys, charge light on the dash in the 720 came on the other week and I ended up uh, fixing just about every part of the charging system. So if you're having any kind of problem with your alternator or anything, this is the video for you. There's two main kinds of alternators that came with 720s. The T-plug style and the parallel plug style. Now, keep in mind, if you're gonna go rip it into an alternator like this, um, if you don't know what you're doing, you might run into some problems, and if you're concerned about your safety or anything, just take it to a professional. Obviously, what we're talking about is homebrew fixes here, and uh, that's not always ideal, so if you don't feel confident, take it to a professional. There's three main components in any one of these alternators. You've got windings, brushes, and magic. Now, you can buy any piece of this magic online. Uh, this component right here is available on Rock Auto. Keep in mind you're gonna have to solder that in. You might wanna replace your brushes while you're in there. What you can't get online easily, at least that I've found, is the plug itself, windings, and housings. Now, on this piece you've got the magical spinny thing, you've got a bearing, two copper contacts, a cooling fan, and a front pulley, which is important. Older models the same, stock they all came with these little anti-radio frequency emitter doodads, which if you have a radio, unlike me, those can be helpful, I guess. On the back of your alternator, you've got the plug, which is hard to put in backwards if you line it up right with a little clippy. If you do successfully put it in backwards, um, your alternator can never, may never turn off and you can get a draw really easily. This is labeled battery, but on some of the cheap rebuilds, it's not labeled battery. This is where the battery goes, and if you have the weird anti-radio frequency emitter, it goes on there and then grounds on one of these screws. The other wire that you'll have is quite simply a ground. So you'll find it attached to this screw which is labeled E or the other screws. Both of these should be getting 12 volts power. Some of them you're lucky enough to get a little label included that will dictate which hole in the plug is for what, but often they're just worn off and not very useful. So in my case, one comes from the idiot light on the dash, the other one tells the alternator how much voltage the battery has. The one that tells the alternator how much voltage the battery has is going to be thicker. The thinner one goes to the dash. If they don't both have 12 volts, the alternator won't run. It won't do anything. Now, in the case of my truck, it needed a new rectifier, which is included in the Magic. It needed new brushes. The, um, I found a set of windings off a Wrecking Art alternator that were okay. The plug was okay. It needed a new bearing on the back. And I ended up taking a alternator out of a D21. Now, there are three kinds of alternators you can put in a 720. Two came factory, but you can run three. One is the generic Nissan tow plug alternator that they ran in all kinds of things. Mostly Z24, D21s though. That will be your top candidate for getting one. The only challenge with those is quite frequently they have a smaller front pulley than what came on the 720 alternator. So you may need to convert to a D21 belt to get it tight enough. So if you verified that your alternator works with the bench test and you're ready to double check your factory wiring and make sure it's intact, I'm going to pull the plug off of the back of the alternator. This is a parallel plug, but same things apply with a T-plug. You'll just want to check and make sure that wiring looks correct. And if it has a little label on it, check that. Obviously, I'm saying it's not gospel, and there's a lot of 720s running around there with weird things going on. But you've got the skinny wire is the signal wire to the idiot light on the dash. Then you've got this wire telling the alternator how much power it's got. You want to check both of these units for 12 volts key on 
uh, engine running if you can. Then, if you do have power at both of those, you need to move on and check the alternator ground on the alternator and test the voltage with the multimeter at the actual post on the alternator. If you have power in the plug and the alternator bench test is good, you're connected to the battery and you've got grounds, then your alternator is going to work. If you're missing any one of those elements, it's not going to work. So if you're missing power in either one of these plugs, like I was in the idiot light on the dash plug, um, you can, for testing purposes, only for testing purposes, wire those straight to the battery. You don't want to really spend a lot of time with it wired to the battery without having the engine running because the fan on the front of the alternator cools the magic in the back. So what I did was, if you haven't seen the fender fuse block video, go ahead and check that out now, uh, link in the description. I wired it into the fender fuse block. And then I had a small problem because the fender fuse block is on all the time wired straight to the battery. So I took this old truck solenoid and I found key on 12 volts coming from the old six pin out plug on the factory fuel injection. 12 volts key on to, to the switcher post on the solenoid. Then I wired the battery to the always hot side of the solenoid and I wired the fuse block into the other side of the solenoid that is only hot when 12 volts is applied here. So that will cause the entire fender fuse block to kick on and off with the key switch, which is key because if you don't do something like that or fix the factory wiring, the rectifier in the alternator will never turn off and you'll get a battery train. This is also giving my choke heater 12 volts key on, which is great because that will also be a battery drain. So if you have a battery drain, those are the two most common causes of battery drain on a 720. This is not a heavy duty continuous operation time solenoid. This is a starter solenoid out of an old truck and consequently it gets really hot and only lasted three days before it burned up. So I'm gonna get a continuous duty solenoid to keep removing here tomorrow and that should work great. They have solenoids that are designed to run only for a brief period on a starting a starter and ones that can be on all the time. There really isn't a price difference. They're average about 20, 25 bucks. So it's really not bad. And then after you do all those things, your alternator should work good. Don't attempt this if you don't think you can finish it. Um, if you're at all scared of completely tearing into the wiring under your hood, just have somebody else take a look at it for you. You know, have the professionals do it. And then, if it causes a fire, it's not my fault. If all else fails, you can always just start wiring things straight to the battery. And just to get home, if your truck burns down, it's not my fault. I accept no responsibility for that. If you're at all concerned, just have the professionals do it. And remember to disconnect the battery before doing electrical stuff, because nobody likes accidentally welding.